Hey guys, this is Nate from RunDreamAchieve.com. Today's video, I wanted to talk on how to run a sub three marathon, okay? I've already created a course on RunDreamAchieve.com called the Sub Three Hour Marathon Pro, and it's for those athletes that are out there, maybe you're one of them that is 100% committed to breaking the sub three hour marathon. I can tell you from experience that anybody that's trying to break a sub three hour marathon had better be committed. You cannot be one toe in, one toe out, and expect to break three hours and run 259 or faster for the half for the full marathon distance. There are specific uh, tips you must follow, uh, fundamentals you must follow uh, in order to break the three hour marathon. There are a lot of talented athletes that never get under the three hour marathon barrier. So what I want for you guys to do is to, I, I, and I hope that you will take away from this video, is um, the, the principles that you need to follow in, in order to bypass the mistakes that other athletes are making that are trying to go after the, the sub three hour marathon but are falling short in terms of pacing. So in this particular video, I wanna cover six specific tips. Uh, a lot of these particular fundamentals uh, I, I cover in other videos as well, but it's very important, especially if you're trying to run 259, 59 or faster for the marathon distance. Um, the first is, is probably the most important, one of the most important, if not the most important, is focus on quality over quantity. You gotta get past thinking that higher kilometers, how, how many miles a week you're running or how many kilometers a week you're running is gonna guarantee you a sub three hour marathon because it's not. I got up to 142 miles a week thinking that um, I would set a personal best for the marathon distance if I ran much, much higher uh, marath uh, mileage per week I had to learn my lesson in regards to that. Uh, I ended up running my personal best of two hours, 19 minutes and 35 seconds for the marathon off of 85 to 90 miles a week. And yes, I did try running up to 140 plus miles a week, but it only left me feeling tired um, and, and lethargic uh, as, as I was leading into my marathon. And I really think that if you're gonna get faster, especially and, and break this particular barrier, you have to get past thinking that working harder is uh, is the answer. It's not the answer. It's working smarter. It's it's using leverage, and leverage is simply doing more with less. And as athletes, as very driven, motivated athletes as we already are, we, we're not afraid of getting out if it's pouring down rain or if it's hot out or if it's snowing or if there's a blizzard. We're going to be out there because we're willing to put in the heavy work um, and anybody that's going after a sub three hour marathon is not the norm. It's, this is a very, very competitive time. Um, the athletes that are that are aiming to break this particular barrier have to train smart. They have to get beyond just working hard and start implementing ways and strategies that are going to get the results they're looking for in a faster manner. But they also have to be patient too. So um, get beyond just quantity and start focusing and zeroing in on quality work. This is where all of my training programs and all of my running courses on RunDreamAchieve.com, including the Sub 3 Hour Marathon Pro Course, is where we focus at. We focus on the exact workouts, the exact uh, training you need to be doing on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and that taper phase that we talk about, that 10 day taper phase where you start backing off, you allow yourself time to recover. Uh, the second tip I want to share, start doing longer tempo runs. If you're going to be breaking a three hour marathon, you need to teach the body to clear lactic acid faster than it's building up. So you need to train at longer durations at your anaerobic threshold because you're going to be running your marathon. You're going to be, especially anybody that's trying to break three hours, you're going to be running at your lactate threshold. So you need to train at longer periods of time to be able to sustain this pace over over the entire distance. It's, it does you no good to be able to sustain a 6.52 mile pace, which is 2.59.59 uh, marathon pace for 15 miles, and then you fall off and you start running you know sevens and eight minutes uh, per mile in the latter stages of, of your race. You need to be able to sustain that pace for the entire duration. So this is where it's really important um, that you're focusing on over time uh, you're, you're progressing the, the duration of your tempo runs. So you've got to be able to, when I was focusing on the marathon, when I was trying to break two hours and 22 minutes, that was my goal. Um, and I know how difficult a sub three hour marathon is as well. It is no joke. You have got to be 100% zeroed in, uh, just razor sharp focused to do this. Um, 
any athletes that, that break three hours really are at that, they're getting close to that elite level. And, and it takes a different mindset, a different approach to your, your um, daily training, your weekly training to be able to do it. So in the athletes, again, the athletes that break this barrier are this are oftentimes not always the hardest working athletes, but the smartest athletes. They, they have a plan, they're sticking to the plan, and they know how to set up their training. And that's why a lot of times investing in, in, a, in a coach or a program uh, will, will really pay, pay, pay you back big time in, in the end because you know you're bypassing the, the mistakes other athletes are doing and you're following a, a, a strong plan. So um, extend out. So again, tempo runs should be done, should be run around anywhere from 165 beats to 172 beats per minute, depending on the age of the athlete. Uh, they're, they're usually run anywhere from, uh, anywhere from 10 to 25 seconds slower than goal race pace. So it's, it's, it's a very aggressive effort, but it's not so fast of an effort that you're going to run into, uh, you're going to be building so much lactic acid that you're not going to be able to clear it. Uh, maybe early on in your training when you're not very fit, you're not going to be able to hold tempo pace for very long. It might be only for two or three miles. And then as you get fitter, um, say, you know, the, the first three weeks, you might two or three miles a, a tempo effort may be all you can handle. But come like uh, weeks eight through 12, you may be able to do six to 12 miles at, temp at tempo effort. So you have to always be thinking about progression. Know that um, the results will come, but you have to also know that allow yourself time to, to have those, those physiological adaptations take effect. So you can't rush the process and break in a three hour marathon. Um, in terms of how to run a sub three, uh, sub three marathon, you, you have to also focus on, which brings me to uh, number three, focus on speed work. It doesn't matter if you are say 90% slow twitch fiber uh, athlete and 10% fast twitch. We all can always work on our speed. Um, that's why the VO2 max, the once per week doing VO2 max workouts is so important because you're training at such high speeds. You're, you're training at speeds that are way faster than sub three hour marathon pace. And that's going to, over time, not immediately, but over time, going to make sub, sub three hour marathon pace feel much more moderate. It's not going to feel as aggressive. It's going to hurt very badly in the last 10K. I don't care how fit you are. Uh, you're going to have to really dig down deep in that last 10K, even if you're very fit and you've done everything correctly uh, in terms of breaking a three-hour marathon, uh, in, in terms of holding that, that sub-three-hour marathon pace. But if you're doing a VO2 max workout per week, which VO2 max is you're, you're really closer to 95 to 100% of your maximum heart rate. So again, we can only spend anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes at this effort. And you, you again, you have to allow yourself time to build into these types of workouts. But uh, focusing on that speed, working on training at, at paces that are closer to your um, 5K to 10K race pace will make marathon race pace feel much more uh, in control, not, not as taxing as, as it would feel early on in your training. So as you get very fit and you start dropping your volume and start dropping your intensity, you do that 10 day taper rather than a three week taper, you're gonna go into your race feeling much more confident because you've trained at paces that are so much faster than race pace. And you've also extended the duration of your long, of your, your tempo runs. So you've trained not only at VO2 max effort, but also at AT effort, anaerobic threshold effort. Uh, and, and then also you, you varied up your paces in training. Uh, that'll really make the difference in trying to break a sub three marathon. Uh, and it will really go a long way, especially in the long term. Uh, nothing's going to happen overnight, especially uh, in terms of the sub three hour marathon. Uh, it may take you, uh, it may take, if you're fortunate um, and you can do it in four months, outstanding. But it may take you a couple uh, more iterations of, of doing this. You may have to uh, go through another four month block, or maybe it might take you a few years to get to a sub three hour marathon. Uh, but I want you to be confident and know that if you're following a plan that works and you've, um, like in terms of how I set up my training programs and my running courses on rundreamachieve.com, everything that I do, I've set up in those, those plans or the courses are the exact same things, the exact same workouts I was doing to run 219.35 and 107.06 for the, for the half marathon, uh, 50.54 for 10 miles, 144.05 for 20 miles. Uh, and it's again, it's about 
bypassing the mistakes of others and trying to, to speed up your, your knowledge and learning what the best runners are doing so you can get better results by using leverage and getting results faster than having to continue to make the same mistakes over and over again and, and slow up the, the progression of your, your personal bests. So I hope that makes sense. Um, number five, jog on your easy days. Okay, get beyond what pace you're running on your easy days. I, I could, like when I was training uh, to break two hours and 22 minutes and what yielded me the 219, obviously two, big part of it was I could care less what pace I was running at on my easy days because my hard days were so difficult. You know, doing six one mile repetitions between 445 and 446 per rep uh, with, a, with a two to three minute recovery at 6,400 feet by myself you know, when I was with the Army World Class Athlete Program, I didn't have the caliber or, well, I didn't have the, the, the huge group of Kenyan-born athletes that the, that the program has now. When I first got to the World Class Athlete Program, I was the only marathoner there outside of Dan Brown. Now, Dan was a two-time Olympian, had run 211.35 for the marathon. He was out in Oregon training by, you know, he was with the Nike team. Um, so, it, I was the only marathoner, male marathoner there. And... I came in with a 51 minute 10 mile time, but I'd only run 243 for the marathon in, prior to arriving to the unit. So I was well below uh, or well above the standards that they were wanting. So I had some big, I had to make some big chunks, uh, drop some big chunks of time. So, um, but th then again, on easy days, I always was focusing on total relaxation, allowing myself time to recover from the hard workouts. and. I've trained with other world-class athletes that literally will jog on their easy days. They, they don't care about how fast they're running. So get beyond worrying about pace, especially if you're trying to break a three-hour marathon. Focus on the workouts, those hard anaerobic workouts, the VO2 max workouts, the hill repetitions, uh, doing longer long runs, which is the, the last um, step I want to share here. Faster long runs, okay? If you, if you do every single, if you run every single weekend, long, slow, long runs, so anywhere from uh, 12 to 22, 23 miles in length, uh, or th say what, 32 kilometers to 35 to 40 kilometers in length, if you're doing long, slow every single weekend, yeah, you're going to become very efficient at running long, slow, uh, long and slow. A sub three hour marathon is no joke. You, again, it, it does you no good to be able to sustain the pace for a sub three hour marathon for 20 miles of the race and then crash and burn in the last 10K. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter that you, you tell your friends or family, man, I was on 245 marathon pace through 20 miles, but I, I ran 330, 336 by, by the, the finish of the race. Again, it's what, what matters is what you did at the finish line, okay? We learn a lot in our mistakes. Everybody loves to talk about their successes, okay? So yeah, sure, it's great that I that I, I ran a 219 marathon, but let me tell you folks, I crashed and burned several times over the years, learned my lesson as well, as I, and I don't want you guys to have to deal with the same mistakes I had to learn from, and that's why a lot of what worked for me and, and how I turned around my running, that's what I implemented in the training programs. I went, for one, I started running faster long runs. I got beyond running just high mileage and thinking high mileage was the answer. And I, and I lowered my mileage, but I sped up the, the mileage I was doing. And I slowed down on my easy days and started jogging instead of running too fast on the days that I absolutely needed that rest. And so what I've done with RunDreamAchieve.com and these videos as well, as well as the training programs and running courses, is I have implemented the main things that work the, the best for me. And I've tried to share that with you guys so that you guys can start getting better results by working smarter rather than harder. And really that's the philosophy around RunDreamAchieve.com uh, is using leverage and not just being the hardest working athlete. There are plenty of hardworking athletes that miss the sub three hour marathon barrier. So to, whether you're trying to break three hours for the marathon, uh, 230 for the marathon, which I have a course for a sub 230 marathon, uh, someone that's trying to break four hours for the marathon, I have a course on that as well. Um, and, and as far as the training programs on, on RunDreamAchieve.com, I have just about every 
uh, time barrier that, that that's out there. I'm still working on trying to make the courses better and the, and the programs better, but to break a sub three hour marathon, you have to get beyond, like I said, get beyond just the, the, the quantity. You have to focus on VO2 max workouts. You have to extend the durations of your tempo run. So in the past, if you're trying to break three hours and you haven't done it yet, look at what you've done in the past. Have your tempo runs been four miles in length? Um, and, and, and realize that that's far too short of a, of a tempo run to, to get to a point where you're able to um, sustain 26.2 miles or 42.2 kilometers at under 652 mile pace. So maybe you need to extend the duration of your, long, of your tempo runs, um, start running faster long runs, but not every single weekend because I'm not saying you need to run fast every single weekend. That's a quick way to be um, uh, overtrained and uh, run into being stale. So you need time to back off too. The rest period is even more important than than the training itself. You have you're not going to get any uh, return on your investment if you don't allow yourself time to jog, relax, chill out on those easy days, uh, so that you can get all that that benefit of those hard anaerobic workouts, the longer duration tempo runs, uh, the track workouts where we do you know six repeat one mile reps or three by two mile repetitions or you know, eight times 800 meters on the track uh, where you start, uh, start off earlier on in the, in the training uh, with more rest and then as you get fitter, you're, you're, and as your heart doesn't have to work as hard, you start adapting to those hard workouts, um, your rest periods drop and the intensity goes up. And then the, ten day, the last 10 days of the, the training plans and on the running courses, we focus on dropping the intensity, dropping the, the volume and allowing you time to recover because again, the recovery period is absolutely essential in order to break a three hour marathon. Again, it goes back to training smarter rather than harder. And you're gonna to need to train smart to break a sub three hour marathon. So that's my answer on how to run a sub three marathon. Training smarter, not harder, but also implementing longer uh, duration tempo runs. Start doing longer fartlek runs. Examples of that would be like 10 uh, times 1K at 170 beats per minute if you're wearing a heart rate monitor on the on the roads followed by 1k easy at 130 to 140 beats per minute so you can time you on a, any most garments you can uh, set up intervals so it'll beep every k so a big uh, way of breaking a sub three hour marathon is to really hammering that hard 1k and then backing off and relying yourself time to relax for 1K and then hammering again and doing reps of that on the, on the roads as well. Longer far licks, um, faster long runs, alternating uh, a faster long run followed by the next week by an easier long run. So and again, recovery, 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 recovery uh, is key to break a sub three hour marathon. Focus on um, uh, doing, focusing on the quality over quality, faster long runs, uh, alternating your 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 paces, like training at VO2 max, training at, at closer to the 3K to, to 10K race pace, is going to make again going to make uh, sub three hour marathon pace feel very easy. So at least in the early stages, and it's going to make you much more well prepared because your, your body's taught you're teaching your body to be able to to use what you have more of, and that's fat storage rather than carbohydrate storage. You can use you can conserve that carbs, carbohydrates so for the last duration during the, the last part of your race so you can pick up or you can sustain the pace whereas your competition may be slowing down uh, because they either went out too hard or they ha again they're still they're still haven't become very efficient at burning fat at race pace so I hope this video has been helpful for you guys leave me a comment if you have a question or concern if you're new to the channel or if you are a regular viewer and you have not yet hit that subscribe button or the bell icon hit those so that when I make a new video, you'll be notified of it. Hope you guys have a great weekend and I will talk to you guys all in the next video.